Yo, what's up everyone? It's Loza. We're back. Another first place deck profile with the big boy Terry Amon. So let's get into the profile. We've got the one cat egg and then the four gummy mon, which is pretty standard now. Uh, drawing cards is just too good, but next set in BT15, we might be swapping out for this egg. Because getting that 1,000 DP next set is pretty important with Magna X, Tyrant Kabuterium on, the Mirror Match for Rapid X stuff. Basically, the plus 1,000 might be better next set. This set, we're on consistency, drawing cards, which is very good. Because we do have lots of cards we need to get to. But yeah, eggs work out great. You've got to play five because we play Willis and Mimi. Spoilers for later. Um, we've got the Searcher Terrium on here. This is the Searcher that adds you a Henry and it adds you any two color green card after that. So it can add you any of your line and potentially any two color card we play in future that is green. Then we've got the uh, BT8 Searcher Terrium on. This looks like top five and it adds a Gargo Rapid. That's it though. It cannot add any Tamers or anything else, but um, they're both sensational. And they combo really well with uh, the option card. You know that we're on uh, the beautiful Double Typhoon because you play Double Typhoon, get a search, and then you play one of these off Double Typhoon next turn and get another search. It's just so much searching, and we do need that with all the different Rapids and Gargos we'll be playing. So then we've got the four of the Terriamon that lets you play a Tamer or a Lopmon for one, basically. And there's our Lopmon there. And there's just one more rookie, so I'm going to put him down there too. So we've got the Memory Blocker Terriamon. The Lotmon that gives Alliance and four of the beautiful. Uh, I would say this is probably the best Terriamon you want in your stack all the time. Um, the guy who makes Willis cost one, let's be real. Um, sensational Terriamon and Inheritable plus a thousand. Absolutely crazy. That's the rookie lineup. So there's eight, 12, uh, 14 rookies going on here. Just the one lop seems to be pretty reasonable for me. But let me know what you guys are running on your Terriamon ratios. All right, and on to the fours this is the easiest part of the profile because it's just going to be uh, all the gold rapids, as you probably already can tell. So here's our first four. We have the alt art from BT8, the sensational gold rapid right here. And then we have the new one from the structure deck, uh, structure deck 17, the gold rapid. That is a blocker, has an inheritable plus a thousand and has armor purge, of course, and the neg 4k. This one's better for clearing big wide boards. This one's better for... Um, you know, when you're doing big checks in security with Fire Rocket and stuff, plus it's a blocker as well. So better for a defensive card. This is the one you want to see on turn one. This is the one you want to see when your opponent's established. A little bit of a bore that you need to wipe out. Uh, but either way, both cards are sensational. And I probably wouldn't play less than four of either of them. And to complement them, we have the level five Rapid Mon. And this Rapid Mon, of course, lets you de-digivolve one of your opponent's Digimon. So combine that with DP Neg and you can actually kill pretty much any level five in the game depending on the deck you're versing. But it's also just your best card to get back into the game when you get wiped by Death X or Crimson or anything like that that wipes your field. You are able to hard play this passing turn. As long as you've got that green tamer in the back, you will be getting the protection from bounce uh, to handle deck and also destruction. You can still lose to DP reduction, but not D-Digivolve. But of course, if you hard played it, you'll have no sources. But yeah, anyway... Hard playing this Rapid Mon um, when, you know, you have nothing better to do is sensational, especially if you have this beautiful guy in the hand because you're able to go into him and still be protected and, you know, shut your opponent off for a turn. Pretty sensational. These are the 12 Rapid Mons we play. I've decided I wouldn't play any more or any less. This is just how you got to play the deck, in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, we'll move on to the options. I am going to show two of them right now because they combo with all these gold Rapid Mons. Two Fire Rocket, which is sensational because... You know, sec plus one on armor is good because even if you die in the first check, you can purge down to your Terriamon thanks to armor purge and get the second check still. You might die in that second check, but hey, you're going to check too. Um, this Rapid Mon negging security by 4k is sensational for a couple of reasons. If you happen to have this on the field, you can neg the security first by attacking with this first so that he has a safer time checking. Another point is, if you have both of these on the field, you're able to fire Rocket. Fire Rocket actually says target a two color card two or more color uh, Digimon and give it sec plus one. So as long as you have an armor out, you can play this without needing a red source and then you can actually just target Mega Gargamon Ace. So I think that's a really cool thing that some people might not know. So I thought I'd put that in there. Also, another thing you can do, if you have enough memory, you're able to just simply fire rocket onto your Rapidmon, whether you play one or two, it doesn't really matter. Digivolve into five, into the Mega Gargamon Ace. You can now check three, restand, check three. So that's kind of sensational. Uh, obviously, if you only have one fire rocket, you'll just check two and restand and check two. But remember, this evolves for five, 
on a uh, level 4 rapid, all the gold rapids, so it's quite steep. But why I mention this combo is because you have a sensational line of play, and if you ever open these cards, you just go for it. If you have hidden potential, fire rocket, a rapid, and just any other rookie hanging around, or say like a double typhoon that you could use to get something laying around, you simply just hidden potential with something else and go into the, well, sorry, first you'd want to use your fire rocket, and then you'd want to hit a potential tapping something else you have going into the Mega Gargoyle Ace, swinging two checks, restanding two checks. That's just such a good early aggressive play if you do happen to have Double Typhoon laying around with fire rocket and hidden potential. I know it's a lot to need for a combo, but man, when you get it, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. Like, it happens more than you think, and it's just good to know things like that in case, you know, all the combo pieces do come together. Um... Is there anything else I should say about Fire Rocket with these cards? Oh yes, out of security, Fire Rocket has the great effect. Um, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with Blocker. The camera is not focusing. Delete one of your opponent's Digimon with Blocker. In the mirror match, you might notice this is a Blocker. So in the finals today was a mirror match. And yeah, I swung into second, hit Fire... I had two Fire Rockets on my Mega Gargamon Ace. Swung in for three checks. Second check was a Fire Rocket deleting my Mega Gargamon Ace. So... Just be aware of that. This is a very good card in the mirror. It's very good in the armor matchup. But be aware that against armor, they'll probably be playing this too. And you could definitely lose your Mega Gargamon Ace to that inheritable... Oh, sorry, that security effect, rather. Um, but still a sensational card I recommend in the deck. At least one or two. Just to give you a little bit of that aggression. Whether you don't open up other things to do. Or you just need it. Because honestly, I find this deck can have some trouble rounding out the game. Sometimes finishing the game is the hard part. So uh, this does help you... Put a bit of pressure on your opponent um, early. Or as I said, with Mega Gargamon Ace, it's just a crazy combo where you can end up checking for security, for example, with just one Fire Rocket and a Rapid. So that is awesome. Now, other ways you can evolve for cheaper, of course, if you've got a couple of agility trainings on the field and some Willis on the field, obviously that five evolution cost can quickly become two or three, which is much more manageable uh, to not pass turn. And if you've got one extra for the Fire Rocket, it's sensational. But anyway, that's about all I have to say about these cards. So we'll move on to the rest of the options and I'll just pack up all of our beautiful rapids. So of course you've already seen we're playing Hidden Potential Discovered because it's sensational. We are playing the Quad Double Typhoon, Quadruple Typhoon. Unfortunately I don't have the fourth alt yet so if you know anyone selling it hit me up. I am looking for that last one because it is the prettiest card in the game dare I say. It's got really nice foiling and texturing and it's just gorgeous. So thank you very much Bandai. Sensational card. In terms of other options, we've got, of course, the Agility Training, and we've got ourselves Giant Missile, Giant Missile, and another Heaven's Judgment. Oop, I'm just going to move everything down here so you can all see it a little bit better. Now, you'll notice I haven't talked about the level 5s and 6s, and we'll get to them in a bit, but I think you know what the 5s are, or the 6s are, sorry, but, you know, the 7s are the interesting part. But anyway, that's going to be the options, along with, of course, the 2 Fire Rocket that we mentioned earlier. So let's get that out of the way. I don't know why I forgot the 6s and 7s, to be honest, but uh, we'll get into them now. Well, you straight up know that we got to play this card at 4. This card is the bread and butter of the deck. This is the boss monster that wins you literally so many matches that you probably have no right winning. Um, just great card. Suspend 2 and lock 2 things from Evo. Nice. Thanks. We will do that. To back it up, we have the 1 Quartz, the 1 Death X, and the 1 Merciful mode. And it looks like a lot of level 6s, or level 7s rather, for how many level 6s we play. But you have to remember... That, um, well, I, I don't know what you have to remember, to be honest. Just these cards are very good. Uh, you normally will hard play this one, whereas uh, the Quartz and the Merciful Mode will be digivolved into. However, these cards are always going to be sec bombs in your sec, so at least they're big 15k bodies in there. They're also just sensational cards that win you different matchups. This card comboed with Hidden Potential or Gargo Ace means you can just suspend a board and swing for a bunch of free checks for a trashing sec. And obviously locking the opponent out of the game. If they do manage to out it, that's okay. You hopefully have some other plays to go through. Merciful Mode can just help you in any purple matchup. Just resetting the trash. As well as deleting a body. When we have Rapid X next set, you can actually have two Megas under it. And you can get a double pop as well. Which is probably not necessary. But if purple's ever good again, Merciful Mode sensational in Rapid and Gargo decks. And of course, Death X. Now it's important to note, we can Digivolve into all three of these cards. Because this is green-black. These are all able to go on here. But obviously, you'd probably prefer to hard play Death X, whereas uh, the other two obviously will be evolutions for 6, for 6, and for 6. Four sensational cards that can win you the game if played at the correct time. They can get a little bit bricky, so I'd understand if you wanted to cut on them. I would say, if anything, you have to play these two. But going into BT16, this card probably will get cut as 
Uh, Purple just kind of falls out of the format as Magna X, Tyrant Kabuteri, Rapid X, and just a bunch of decks that make big DP bosses are going to be the flavor of that month. So, um, yeah, don't really think we'll play this in the next format, but it's very good right now to stop Leviamon or any other purple shenanigans. All right, finishing up, we've got some tamers. We've got Triple Willis. Um, this is swapped between four and three copies in all my builds. And then we've got one Henry and one Mimi. This list, if you've noticed, is a direct copy of the second place Oceanics list by uh, Reese, I believe his name was. Um, he did sensational in that event, managed to get second with Terriamon Mega Gargamon in BT15, which I think is crazy because the deck's definitely OP in next set, and it's just kind of decent and, you know, tier. Some some people say tier 3, some people say tier 4. Whatever you say, I think this deck's actually really good right now, and it obviously gets way, way better. Um, so, yeah. Super awesome deck. Does have a very bad Sovereigns matchup, though, so I would understand if that is the dilemma. Um, Mimi can be obviously very good because you can tap her and get some aggression, but I find with Willis you're normally out of eggs. So I just the one Mimi and the Henry instead as well, because sometimes you'll swing in with uh, any of your Gargo Rapids and getting that tap will uh, Henry sorry to suspend one of their Digimon can be quite crucial with their blockers and stuff like that. So it's kind of cool. Uh, Willis is obviously absurdly powerful. You do need to see Willis with this Terriamon or it's way worse. So your perfect turn one is promoting, or turn two rather, is promoting this Terriamon and using its effect to play down that Willis and flipping a new egg and hopefully you've got another Terriamon to put in the back. Um, but yeah, absolutely sensational turn one, uh, turn two plays rather, pushing out plays with the uh, new Terriamon with the OG Willis, making Willis a one cost, which definitely makes it feel a lot better and Willis will reduce all your Evos uh, into Gargo Rapids the turns after that. So it's absolutely huge. Um, let's talk about matchups real quick. So I did mention the finals was a Rapidmon Mirror. And let me say, just in the finals, you really just want to be not swinging in when there's Gold Rapids or Rapids on the field. You just don't want to swing in. It's a very interesting match regardless. Um, you pretty much, when these are on the field, you need to go into your old, own go, Gold Rapids sorry, to out them. Or if you really have to, it's honestly worth it. But you have to start slapping down some of these removal cards to get rid of their Rapid Mons. Because you do not swing into your opponent unless you know you're swinging with this one and it's killing the thing that can blast they will have this and they will blast into this so it's really about playing around the mega gargamon ace so that was the finals i guess we're doing my uh pairings backwards today so yes um the mirror match in the finals was very cool i really liked it ggs to jason that was a fun match um i managed to have really good opening hands both games to be honest and that really helped me to you know just play Rapid Mons and out his Rapid Mons. So it was a fun game, and I won that 2-0. Now, the round before that, I was versing Jellymon. I also won 2-0. Jellymon, actually quite a good deck as it has Source Strip, and stripping away, uh, he stripped away from my Omnimon Merciful Mode. He managed to strip away the Mega Gargamon Ace, of course, giving him a bunch of memory, but also meaning the Merciful Mode effect doesn't activate to trash itself and trash a sec. So that was really weird and... Like, I just had a Merciful Mode sitting on my board because I got stunned by the Jellymon stuff for a while. So that was really weird, and uh, I learned a lot of things about that matchup, which are very unique. Um, they can hard slam their level 5 the same way we hard slam our level 5, but theirs just gets blocker. Ours has, obviously, protection, which is sensational. Um, but anyway, um, Jellymon round 2, Rapidmon, Terrymon finals. The first round was against Greymon. It was uh, pretty just War Greymon, pretty standard War Greymon. The deck is still obviously a very good deck with a lot of good support, but it can just have a bit of trouble finding their pieces sometimes. And, um, you know, this deck doesn't need pieces. Any As long as you see a Terriamon, very much like armor, where you just need one Vmon and one armor, and from there you're pretty much good to go. Obviously you can Digivolve into this, or you can hard play this, and either of these can turn into your uh, Mega Gargamon Ace, which is just way too oppressive. This deck being able to be played the way it is, it, it makes playing a normal green deck really hard. It really does. Playing any normal stack deck after this is kind of impossible. These cards obviously are very expensive level 4s to Digivolve into or hard play, but they're just so worth it that, you know, it's fine. And obviously you hard play this Rapid Mon a lot of the time because its effect is on play, but also when Digivolving. So there are games where you Digivolve into it because it's more memory efficient, but there's definitely games where you have to hard slam this or you want to hard slam this because you don't want to be de-Digivolved, for example. And that just really, really helps. Uh, I think that's about all I have to say about this list. Shoutouts to everyone for helping me test. Shoutouts to the boys at Locals. You are all a bunch of legends. And uh, yeah, that's that's about all I got to say. Let me know down in the comments what you're running in your Terriamon build for BT15. 
And I've even got some BT16 profiles on the channel too, if you want to check those out, or if you'd like to tell me what you're running in BT16. But yeah, I love Terriamon, and I hope I'll keep being the Terriamon guy. But thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.